Today's People and Places focuses on an American author who has made it her goal to educate young people about the horrors of nuclear war weapons. Her novel, The Last Cherry Blossom, is based on the experiences of her late mother, who survived the 1945 atomic bombing of Hiroshima. NHK World's Toby Burns reports. This junior high school is located in the U.S. state of North Carolina. On this day, local author Kathleen Birkinshaw has been invited to speak to a social studies class. Good morning. She's talking about The Last Cherry Blossom, her novel aimed at young adults published in 2016. The main character is based on her mother, Toshiko Ishikawa Hilliker, who was 12 years old when the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. The beginning of the story tells of the main character's everyday life. I decided then, when I write the book, I was going to start the book six months before the bomb was dropped because I really wanted to give a feel of the culture of that time, the mindset of the people living in Japan at that time. Papa raised his glass and said, Cherry blossoms are like life itself, so beautiful yet so fragile that they bloom only a short time. A toast to my family, and to enjoying our time together. Come bite. But the contented family life they had made for themselves all of a sudden came to an abrupt end. I heard a moan. Papa's head fell to the side and his arm dangled off the wagon. I wanted to sob until I could no longer breathe, but the tears would not fall. It was as if the intense heat of the blast had dried them all up. You can see here in the book. After reading passages from her book, Birkinshaw spoke about her mother's life after the bombing. She says the trauma left her with deep emotional scars. Now this here is where my mother was. But she cut herself out of that picture because she felt guilty. She was the only one still alive. Her mother lost all of her immediate family members because of the bombing. In despair, she considered suicide. But remembering her father's words to stay strong renewed her determination to live. She eventually met and married an American serviceman and started a new life in the United States. To your mother, or is it just... After her talk, students who had read the book questioned her about her mother's life. Um, was your mom ever able to forgive the state after bombing Japan? She said, we, we were not happy at all how it happened, and that, but we knew now the war's over and maybe we can rebuild our lives. So she said they were really focusing on that piece. For many years, her mother did not talk about her experiences, even to her daughter. It was finally her granddaughter who got her to open up. She told her that a classmate in her elementary school had described the mushroom cloud created by the atomic bomb as cool was a little bit surprised that we learned so little about the bomb and she agreed with me that it was important because while my classmates were talking about the cool mushroom cloud, they weren't doing it out of any ill intent. They simply weren't aware of the full situation. When she heard about the age of the students and, and she thought it would be worth doing because they could relate to her. Birkinshaw suffers from a chronic nerve disorder complex regional pain syndrome. Her doctors believe it could be related to her mother's exposure to radiation from the bombing. The condition has left her unable to travel abroad, but she's still determined to pass on her message to children around the world. Birkinshaw's book is being used as a textbook at an international school in Hiroshima. By recounting the survivors' lives in detail, it has helped students understand the true extent of the bomb's impact. Before I read the book, I didn't have an opinion about the war. Now I believe in promoting peace. Birkinshaw hopes that by sharing her mother's story, future generations will follow up on her efforts to make sure that no one ever again experiences the horrors of an atomic bombing. Toby Burns, NHK World, New York. 
In November 2019, the UN Office for Disarmament Affairs selected the book as one of its resources for teachers and students. 75 years after the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the last cherry blossom is being used in American schools to promote disarmament and peace education.